beautiful, fresh, so fresh. It's like fresh bread up in here every day. It smells like fresh bread. I uh, wish that it did smell like fresh bread. Yeah, I was actually in a coffee. Now, there aren't any coffee shops open. I know we, used, we would like to frequent uh, various tasters, uh, go do the taste experience, the bean scene. Indeed, the bean scene is uh, is a, a show in... in um... In, in construction, I suppose, and in, yes. in, in development, where we do uh, coffee tasting around uh, local gas stations in Israel, it's uh, it's an up and comer. You're gonna want to, uh, you're not gonna yeah. wanna miss it. So we went to a couple different gas stations, but today there's a secret Galilee place, which uh, which has these beans that they they bring it. So all the stores are closed, everything's closed. However, this one place was open, and we were able to go. I was able to go and pick up some an amazing uh, mix of a few different roasts and uh, medium long finish uh, deliciousness. And wow. so that's what we're going to be having as well. Oh, there it is. How um, about that? <laughs> so, so some businesses are indeed indeed open. Yeah, oh, let me indeed. shine a light on the subject. <laughs> 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 so, that, so we are welcome to the prayer hotline. Uh, and that means it's a line, it's, it's a lifeline. For it's someone. a line that's hot. Yeah. And you it's can, a hot line. That's right. And so, as always, I'm Doug Hershey. I'm mm. author of Israel Rising. This is Haim Mailspin. He is the director of the Aliyah Return Center, which is the illustrious and fabulous and glorious location that we're sitting at right this very moment. It's miraculous, uh, to borrow the words of the Bible. Yeah, in indeed. Yeah. <laughs> indeed it is. <laughs> but this is where Yeshua chose his team, his Galilean team. Here's where he's, where I remember the hills are alive with the sounds of, of, prayer. of prayer because uh remember master how should we pray teach us to pray hey these galileans learned in this land mm. how to pray and now with the house of prayer being constructed and all of you re registering with your emails for the to be part of this amazing event called dedication of vertical galley house of prayer and we believe prayer is a huge part of what we're doing hence the prayer hotline every single day, except not on a Shabbat. But even tomorrow we'll have it, right? As Shabbat is descending and... Descending things... like glorious butterflies yes. from the heavens. From the other uh, dimension. In fact, it's actually a, a really beautiful thing. We kind of joke about it, but Shabbat mm -hmm. in the in the Jewish culture, it's it's supposed to be welcomed like a like a new bride. Yes. So it's yes. it's to be this beautiful thing that's being anticipated and, and yes. ex expectation. So we joke about you know laying around and doing nothing and enjoying the day, but it really is a, a really beautiful and refreshing time here in Israel. And it's like a global Shabbat tomorrow because the whole world is at a standstill, at a Shabbatitude, at a let's not work, at a Ten Commandment. Fourth commandment level. Fourth fourth commandment level. Close. Keep the fifth, I think that's right. Keep the Sabbath day. So uh, we're excited to say that people, when they get married, they have sometimes, I want to play, uh, I want to, when I enter, I would like to have the bridal song. Hmm. Well, there is an entire, entire bridal rhythm, which is played here in the Middle East. Whenever a bride will come forth, there's this tambourine. It's a special, I can't really, but it's like, <laughs> It's it's a very upbeat wow. bridal entrance uh, just like beat. that and I, I felt like I was there for a moment. I will actually, you know what I'll do? I'll try to post it on one of the one of the um, uh, comments on this. If you want to hear it? I'll show you a bridal uh, drum beat. But the important thing is, is when Shabbat comes in, it's a it's a peace and it's a rest, and uh, that's what's about to happen here throughout the land. People are getting their challah ready, and we're counting. What's the day today of the Pentecost count? I believe it's uh, 14, 14. One, four, 14, moving in, and that starts this evening, correct? That's right. Well, this evening, I believe, will be 15. Oh, so right now so. is 14. Yes, I think we count. All right, them. very good. Yeah, so we are... Once it gets past the amount of my fingers, then I start to lose we're track. Older I than... to start including some toes. That's right. We're more than Josiah was when he began to reign uh, in the, as king of Judea. Yes. So in the meantime, mm. as you are joining us... As always, drop us a line. Let us know where you're from in the comments. Drop us a little hey, hey, hey from wherever you're at. Tell us where you're from and if there's anything uh, we can be praying with you, praying for you. Uh, I know yesterday, in the, uh, the, the last couple days when... Um, when, when uh, somebody has put a prayer request on there. Yes. Not only are we praying for you from the Galilee, but you find that there's people from around the world that are praying for you as well. That's and right. So we like to be able to do that and kind of have this sort of online global prayer thing, which is 
pretty cool. It's pretty amazing. No matter where you're at, whether it's first thing in the morning in the United States or it's still yes. dark out if you're on the west coast of the U.S. or here it's, uh, what, two in the afternoon, a little after two. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a cool thing to be praying with friends Start and the day out right people from around the world. Sight. That's right. And join in with the, with the global gathering of believers. And this isn't a conference. This isn't a one-time thing. This is a way of life to just get in the word, to be able to uh, encourage one another, to be able to pray for one another. And you know what? Soon, as we say, we'll all be rid of the vid and free to do gr in a greater measure what he bid. So we're just saying, you know, we don't even have to. It's not really not even about the coronavirus. It's about the call of Cyrus. We, I feel God's wanting to, to shake us up to be able to say, hey, what is the call of Cyrus? Oh, right. It has to do Passover and the Exodus has to do with Jewish people coming home to Israel. It has to do with helping with that. It has to do with preparing a place of the presence of the Lord in his land, in his neighborhood. And, and it's going to be a great outpour of God's spirit throughout the world. And uh, so that's exciting. And, and as we lead up to Pentecost, we're connecting it every day and we're saying, look at this. We just got a few days away. And we are going to be able to see what we believe will be a great outpouring. The beginnings of, right. beginnings of what is a revival that has no rival. We like it. We like it. Mylene from, uh, from the Philippines. The Philippines is a faithful country. They yeah, drop a they line do. They on, are awesome. on an ongoing basis. Sorala, Joanne from the UK. <laughs> Um, you know that Alyssa Jane Pell from from uh, Australia. She's an awesome person. She's come on a few times. She and, uh, is actually in the studio, and we are honored that we would be graced by her presence. You know, none of this would be possible without such a team. Really, the whole thing, the whole Alia Return Center, is just amazing to see a team of people who who are really it's really counterintuitive. They're selfless. People are mm. saying, "I'm here to serve God. I'm here to serve His purposes. I'll open a Bible. You keep. You better keep the Bible away from me because I'll be doing it." I'll mean, find a verse. If it says trim a vine, the foreigners will come from Australia and they'll trim a vine. They just push people out of the way they just say, to go trim a vine. I want my blessing. You know what? I want, I want to do my blessing. And I want to do something that blesses God. You know, if it says, you know, they will come and they will worship on Tabernacle World, well, by his word, they are coming. And they are doing uh, exactly that. And they're saying, I want to do that. If it says... They will be uh, your help with the with the, the herding of the what is it? They will be your herdsmen and your vine dressers and herdsmen and yeah. plowmen. They're like we want to work on the gardens. They're out doing the agricultural stuff alongside us. And, and the uh, coffee makers. I don't know if that's in there, but uh, I think it's in the fine print in the Hebrew somewhere. And Buna uh, Buna is how is the word for coffee in Ethiopian in uh, Amharic Buna. Amharic. So I wonder if Bueno, which means good in Spanish, somehow is related. To that family taste grouping. Well, if not, there should be uh, an, an Ethiopian and a Spanish person hang out together and they could Having coffee. make something wonderful. Pam from Naples, Florida. Sarala, uh, call, she's excited about the call of Cyrus. Melanie from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Stacia from Atlanta. She also has a little coffee cup for us. We're way ahead of you. Hey, great. Uh, and Jackie yeah. Jeffenen from, uh, from South, Af uh, South Africa. Yeah, you can actually get these cups. Uh, a few people are saying, hey, when, when I join, I actually pour myself a coffee and I actually have coffee together in the same mugs. Well, that supports people that work over here too. So it does, us. and it just kind of makes everybody feel really warm when you have a cup and we have a cup and we all have cups together. It's just right. this strange togetherness sort of feeling that all yes. makes us feel warm and fuzzy inside, don't you think? Yes, and energetic. Indeed. <laughs> Lots of caffeine, and it makes us happy. So if yes. you are jumping in with us, as you clearly are at the moment, uh, Ruth jumping in, speaking of us, uh, speaking of jumping in, Ruth from Maine, uh, Portland Life Center, Portland, Maine, and not Portland, Oregon, actually the real Portland. Yes. The first Portland, Portland, Maine. Uh, jumping in with us from there, uh, welcome, and all of our friends back there. But if you're jumping in with us today, we are in Psalm 130. It's one of the Psalms of Ascent. It's short. We're going to talk a lot uh, around right. that. Pray on that. That'll be sort of our, our guiding, 130, uh, okay. guiding uh, passage as we go through here. Mm -hmm. but, but we also have, it's almost like Hanukkah around here. Hanukkah, right. Christmas, gift giving, birthdays. Right. You have a yeah. box of, Actually, of treats. Or are we going to yeah. save that for later? No, I mean, literally, just moments before we started this broadcast, moments before, uh, a truck pulled up uh, and they actually said we have a gift sent by some friends. In fact, 
because I don't know how much you know about what goes on here every day. Lots is going on. We're not just sitting in the studio. We're doing lots and lots all the time. And so this came in. Uh, I haven't opened it yet, actually. So uh -huh. it could be anything. It's so exciting. But, uh, but what it is, it's from, it's, it's right it's there. It's from the North Pole, St. Nicholas. Yeah. Got a special delivery. It's uh, no, just kidding. New Quick Horse Technology Company uh, out of Sui Wai Industrial Center, Hong Kong, Lai Chi Kok Street. Okay. Lai Chi Kok. And that's in Hong Kong. Mm. And uh, so they sent it to the Alia Return Center uh, with the desire to bless the, the great work that's going on here. And uh, with your permission, wow. I'll just go ahead and open this. You have my uh, permission. Now, of course, the we sterilize things, just so you know. And we are also wearing gloves and masks normally, but this box is now gone through. Uh, well, now we are multiple about to levels it. of sterilization. Multiple, just tell. kidding, not multiple levels, but now we'll carefully, with great care, great care, open these pickles. See if this will just. Uh, um, yeah, I don't actually know what's in here, so I'm kind of excited myself. I, I hope it's a, pickles. I have a feeling like what we what we need what we've been needing here is uh, really a way to help with the, the government's lack of masks and uh, gloves. So hold on one second, just get this thing open here. Uh, you can hear we're mowing outside too. Yeah, mowing, who is uh, doing that? That's, uh, that's we're doing some. What are they thinking? Incredible, incredible. Uh, <laughs> this, I mean, the work goes on here. I want you to know we're building the prayer house, vertical galley house of prayer. This isn't just a catchphrase. We're building it, and uh, it's going to be. We're doing that dedication. Coming up, real quick. What do you think it is? Dun, what do dun, you dun, think dun, it dun. is? Let's Socks. find out. Socks. Uh, here we are. Put that carefully over there. Okay. Oh wow. Two socks. No, no. It looks like because there's many people under our care here. Aha! Uh -huh. Each one of these is a little packet, I see. Oh, very nice. Uh, Chinese socks. One holding. One holding, okay? I want Disposable one. Disposable medical mask. <laughs> hey, we're going to be able to bless the hospital as well. Um, we'll be able to take care of some of the hospital workers. Uh, some friends of ours are actually uh, nurses and doctors, and we. They, they don't even have enough. Uh, everybody needs to wear one when they're outside. There we go. Wow, look at that. Wow. Excellent. Now, how many are on each each of these, I wonder? I don't know. But this is a lot. These are, That's these a lot are, of pickles. These are thousands. Does the white side go on or the blue side? Which one is it? Uh, is it well, let me read it. it. Maybe you can read it for us. Is it this way? The, the blue. So he has his backwards? Backwards? Okay, awesome. here we go. Here we go. It's actually the white side that goes up. Give me that knife and I'm ready for surgery. Uh, you can probably read that for us a little better. <laughs> so, hey, well, Indeed. thank you all who are sending in masks, gloves, clothes, but really, actually, to be totally honest, it's hard to get things through. This took forever. Uh, those who also are sending checks, thank you, too. Indeed. Uh, because then we can also pick up stuff like this. This is amazing. Uh, we are able to be a blessing now to the local. I love it. To the local health workers. This is great, 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 great. Very good. So if you're jumping in with a Psalm 130 is where we're beginning. Wasn't that exciting? There are just new gifts and new presents and Things new surprises on. every single day. That's thousands. We every single thousands day. Thousands of people. Every single day. So you said Psalms 130? Is that what Psalm we're 130, and it's the middle of the Psalms of Ascent. So like the Psalms it. of Ascent are so from Psalm 120 to 134, and they're really short Psalms. And, uh, and if, you, if you read them all separate, they just seem to be short little scattered things. But something I like to do, Haim, when I have groups with Ezra Adventures, yeah. is I'd like to stay within walking distance of the old city in Jerusalem. And then we wake everybody up with, um, with an angry shofar. No, do we, we, we tell people to set their alarms for 4.30. Shofar blast. <laughs> for like, like around 4.30 before the sun comes up. And we do what we call the Psalms of Ascent Walk. So, uh, so if if you follow the story, and maybe this is something for for later reading, if you're um, looking for a, a different Bible study or something to look through, instead of reading Psalm uh, 121 or 134, just that so you're kind of randomly picking them, follow Psalm 120 to 134. Read them all in one sitting, as if it's all one continual flow. Read right. it all as one story, and just kind of where it says like Psalm 122, Psalm 123, just cross out that thing and just read it, or at least in your mind. And then right. read it, and what you find is this guy who, it's, it's this journey of a pilgrim who starts uh, just saying, you know what, I've been out of the presence of God for too long, and it just, 
follows this this flow of, of sort of really discipleship and what happens when my my feet are standing within the gates and what Jerusalem's like right. and why I'm there and then by the end it has this outward view of blessing everybody from out it's this beautiful story and so what we like to do with these Ezra Adventures groups uh, or at least the groups that I'm leading when we're in, in Jerusalem is I like to um, get people up and going and we read the first couple ones and then we just we go on the walk so that by the time that the sun comes up over the Mount of Olives, there's a, a really special place I like to sit in the old city walls where I just get everybody kind of uh, off on their own. Just, hey, we're having a 10, right. 15 minutes with the Lord. And in Psalm, uh, I think it's Psalm 130 yeah. that, that, that we're going to be we're going to be reading here. Verse six, so we'll hit it later, but it talks about my soul waits for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning. So by the time we're mm -hmm. reading that in the pattern, that people are watching the morning uh, the watching the dawn break literally over the Mount of Olives while sitting on the mountain or sitting on uh, on the old city walls of Jerusalem and it becomes this really special moment that people really connect with the Lord as as uh, just we're watching the city of Jerusalem awake and so it's one of the things if you jump in, jump in with uh, with Ezra adventures but and we have some time once all of this is passed and once people start flooding back to to the city of the great king and start flooding back to the land that's one of the things yeah. we like to do and and so when you follow this story this is just literally out of uh just right smack in the middle so in a way it we're not uh I, I wanted to give you some context of again reading from psalm 120 to 134 this is psalm 130 and so we'll be praying through some of this but this is one I, to me that's significant. i always lo love when i see song of a sense a song of a sense and of course as the Aliyah return center we always when we go up to Jerusalem with various groups uh, because we have the uh, the ambassador Academy which stays of course half in Jerusalem one month in Jerusalem one month in the Galilee and the part where we're going up to Jerusalem we'll read some of these we'll have different people read some of these yeah and they'll get to actually say wow we're actually ascending we're actually Aliyahing it's Aliyah isn't just making a Jewish person coming home to the land of Israel it's also ascending to like what we would do three times a year on Pass on Passover, on um, Tabernacles, and of course, and of course on Shavuot coming, Shavuot coming up, Pentecost. There would be an ascension, but it does say there's that provision in Deuteronomy. If it's too far away, you can do it in your village. You, you can, can celebrate. You can party in your own in home. In your own home, and if, it, if you're not able to go there or there's like a COVID uh, travel restriction, yes. 100 meters, you can do it within your homes, and you can still do Pentecost even in America. So that provision is there, and that's great. But I love to read these and say... We're going up, and that's part of it. We're starting out in the depths. I think we're going to read that in a second. We're starting out in the depths, mm. and it's not a fun place to be in a world that's shut down, but we're seeing the climb out. We're seeing the ascent. We're seeing the Aliyah. Yeah. yeah, and so one of the uh, one of the, sort of just the, the very practical, tangible aspects of this is, like Haim said, that they're the Psalms of, of ascent, the Psalms mm -hmm. of going up, mm -hmm. and even just... Uh, you know, so much so that this this land just will often speak for itself, and so right. the only way that you go to Jerusalem is that it, is that you go up. It's, yeah. Jerusalem is one of the highest points in, in Israel, aside from Mount Hermon up in the north. But uh, when you go up to Jerusalem, that's a popular phrase. Let's go up to the mountain of the right. Lord. Let's go up to Jerusalem. The reason why that is, the reason why that's in the scriptures, is because you literally go up. You go into the yeah. valley and then you go up. So it's uh, it's going up to the mountain of God. And I had somebody tell me once that. Um, uh, the, the Psalms of Ascent, the reason why they're short is because they would sing them on the way. And, and when you're talking and singing while you're going uphill, uh, you know, you're out of breath and you want to keep the psalm short. So I don't know if that's true or not, but it's, you know, it, it'll float my boat. It really could be. I mean, some of these are very, three verses. Some of these are a, lot, a few or three verses, uh, six verses, you know. And, uh, but let's dive into that and, uh, and remember and let our hearts remember that we're part of a Bible story right now. It's not, the Bible isn't just something of the past. Uh, or else we could just be reading some other historical documents too. Uh, but we're looking at something that affects us today and that we can learn from today and we can implement today and get that fresh bread this morning, right. uh, the fresh manna so, today. So before we even begin, why don't we just Let's spend a little it. bit of time in prayer first yeah. and, uh, and then we'll, dump, we'll jump right in here to Psalm okay. 130. Uh, we're going through the whole yes. psalm today. Yes, Lord, if there is someone who's crying from the depths, if there's someone, Lord, who feels that, they, there is, that they're at the bottom of the bottom, and that can be the case, Lord. I, I had, a, I had a, a, a person write me yesterday, my friend, I don't want to say his name, and he just said, you know, it's so sad. Both lungs of my daughter, 
Both mm-hmm. lungs are, are, are in need of either operation or some major operations, major surgeries and, uh, or, or whatever. And uh, it's just very hard to be sitting outside that hospital bed, uh, mm-hmm. outside the hospital room, because uh, it's all quarantined off and, and I can't get near. And it's just, Lord, if we pray, if someone's in their depths of their, if someone's in a place where they just say, I don't see how I could ever see any openness. And there's, it just seems like I'm at the bottom of the bottom. Well, there's only alia to go from there. There's only up, only an mm. ascension. A psalm, and these psalms, I pray, Lord, as we're reading this, may it really take people up and ascend alia them out of a yeah. pit, out of a miry clay, and put our hearts on you. We can trust in you, and you're not going to let us down, Lord. And and we just thank you for that, and we just pray that today will be a journey of alia for all mm. of us in a spiritual sense. Amen. Yes, yes, God, would you? We ask, Lord, that you would continue to to, uh, to lift our vision higher towards the things that you're looking at. God, would you give us your perspective on the things that are going on around the earth, mm-hmm. uh, in our communities, even in our even in our own lives, Lord? Would you give us revelation yes. for for what you're doing in this hour for us? And God, like Han was praying, we're asking that you would take us up. You'd take mm-hmm. us higher. You you would connect us with your purposes that you're doing in the earth. God, we ask that um, that you would help us to uh, to just simply let go of a lot of our own struggles and, uh, and our hardships of things that perhaps yes. we've been focusing on. And we want to uh, leave that stuff behind. We want to refocus our hearts on yes. you and trust you for the provision, trust you uh, for, for mm. the good days ahead. And uh, as things are trying to reopen, or right. all, some of the even here in Israel, some of the coming restrictions, lots of uncertainties even still remaining in the days ahead, really around yeah. the world. God, we're just asking for your grace and your favor in these days, that um, that our hearts would remain steadfast on you, that our, our hearts would be devoted to you, devoted to the word, and that uh, that you would keep us from distraction and you would keep us from uh, from these little tributaries that would yeah. take us off the, the, the main path that you would have us on. Right. So God, we love you, we bless you, we ask God that you would um, you would speak to us today out of these scriptures and uh, give us uh, give us the prayers to pray for our friends around the world. Yes. Yeshua's name. Amen. Out of the depths I have cried to you. One of the catchphrases that we've been saying is you can't look to Doctor Who sometimes. People are looking for answers. People are saying all kinds of stuff. Is it 5G? Is it a great conspiracy? Is it the end of the world? Is it the new world order? Is it this and that? And we say, look, you know, we're not we're not here to talk about conspiracies. We're here to talk about one thing, and that's our one thing have I desired of the Lord. That yeah. one thing will I seek. And what is that? To know you, to that I can dwell in the house of the Lord. And that's why we're trying to build this literal vertical galley house of prayer, and but also align our hearts in prayer every day. This one thing will I seek. So that's what he's doing. He's in the depths and he's not he's not crying out to uh, the dark web. He's <laughs> he says, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Amen. If you, O Lord, should keep account and treat us according to our sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yeah. None of us could stand is the answer, David. Nobody. Nobody. Mm-mm. And I love that in Psalms 143. If I could quickly pair 143 verse 2. Oh my goodness. Just, it's a real Do it. truth uh, where it says, Do not enter into judgment with your servant. For in your sight, no man living is righteous or justified. So good. Nobody so good. can be justified. He knows these principles. King David is a smart cookie. He's a good guy. You and, know, and, uh, and what I love about that as well, and, and perhaps this is a, you know, a, a point of conviction for our own hearts, but we're, we're yeah. saying even to God, if you, O oh Lord, should mark iniquities, if you keep track of, of sins, if you keep track right. of stuff, who could stand? So if... if if when when God keeps track of sins, there's nobody that's going to stand. You know, if we're keeping track of right. other people's sins, we're uh, we're you know we're creating that same situation for other people. So right. you know, when when we're keeping track of somebody else's sins, when we're holding that over somebody else's, yeah. like we we want people to do better. We you know oftentimes we become critical or judgmental of other people because we expect other things. But when we hold that garbage mm-hmm. over other people's heads. Even David is saying, like, nobody can stand. Nobody can stand when, when there's judgment or when there's keeping track of sins or, right. or keeping score in relationships or that kind of thing. Like, nobody, right. nobody can stand under that. And David's right. recognizing that and saying, Lord, if there's anybody who has the right to keep score or right. mark iniquities or keep track of sins, it's you. But, but you know that we can't stand, and so you don't do that. And so, uh, so this, this whole aspect of, and we could really spend the rest of the time probably right. talking about forgiveness and letting things right. go and <laughs> extending grace, that's really not only for, for our own hearts, but it's, mm-hmm. it's extending grace towards other people because 
You know, if, if you and I have a problem, I mean, ultimately, I want you to stand. Yeah. And if I'm holding stuff over your head, mm -hmm. then scripturally and biblically, like nobody can carry that weight. Yeah. And so the whole point of, of having a redeemer, the whole point of having Yeshua, when we talk about carrying the weight of the world, sin and bitterness and that type of stuff, it, it has a literal weight. In fact, sometimes when people True. first uh, have an encounter with the Lord, they That's talk right. about uh, feeling much lighter and much heavier. Right. And, uh, and God's desire for you is really to stand, and that's why he doesn't keep track. It's true. It's because I know, you know, Holocaust Remembrance Day was just yesterday, and uh, yesterday, right? And mm -hmm. then we had this, there was this whole campaign done by, by bad, baddie, baddie people, which said Holocaust. Like, <laughs> couldn't believe what I was reading, and it says, "Yeah, you know, Jewish people. You know, if you got the if you got the flu, go find a Jew. If you got the bug, go give a hug to a Jew, and and uh, and Holocaust, then he'll die." And and I was like, "That's really bad." But this was famous. This was all over the world. Yeah, it was crazy. And I couldn't believe how far that this this evil was going. Like, that's not cool at all. And then you see you see this like uh, it's it's a spiritual thing. It's like hate. It's it's abnormal. It's it's psychosis. It's uh. It's, it's just craziness. But um, what you have, on the other hand, is you have someone like Corey Ten Boom. Because you have our different rooms here, don't have numbers, but each of our rooms is named after a non-Jewish person who helped Jewish people, and helped God's purposes, God's mm. plans, written out in the scriptures. Anyone who wants the Alia scriptures, just send me your email. I know some of you got to catch a flight. Kelly, God bless you, and good seeing you guys. Uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for sharing this stream. STS share this stream because others right. need to hear good news. But forgiveness is good news. King David's talking about forgiveness right here. So each of our rooms here is named after a different hero, non-Jewish person who says, I've read the Aliyah scriptures. Aliyah is something I want to help with. And uh, part of that was rescuing Jewish people from the Holocaust. So if you're not Dutch, you're not much. Uh, that's the joke. <laughs> and uh, so Corey uh, decided right. to hide some Dutch Jews, right? You know this whole story. And then finally her, her parents, and they had this hiding place. And one thing led to another, got discovered. And you are going against the third Reich. You shall go to, you know, you're going to go to, uh, to the, they said, okay, put us on the train and we'll get exterminated, burned, cremated, uh, yeah. alive, uh, gassed, and so on, Cyclone B, gas and whatnot. And so they went to, to perish. They went to Parrish, and uh, she managed to escape. But you probably remember the story that she uh, managed to escape, and this one German officer that was the one really arresting her, I believe is how the story goes, he remembered her face, and she remembered his face. He didn't remember her face. She escapes. She's doing seminars about forgiveness throughout the world after yeah, this, and amazing. how someone who wasn't even a Jewish person was about to be killed, escaped, and then she's talking about forgiveness. And uh, if anyone should, could hold a real thing, it would be her, uh, you know. And so then she sees in one of her speeches, I don't know if you know the story, she sees that very Nazi in America somewhere, sees that very Nazi uh, SS officer in there. And she decides she's at a point where she has to now choose, is she going to forgive or will she not? And she's been talking about forgiveness. It was time to put it to the test. And she just went and told him, you don't even remember who I am, but I'm the one. I'm, I'm the one who you sent to my death, you know, and I forgive you. And uh, he just started crying, and, and it's just amazing. You could Google that story, but that's why one of our rooms here in the Alia Return Center is honors Corey Ten Boom and the work she and many others like her have done in an act of forgiveness. It's amazing. Well, I was just uh, going to give you some Corey Ten Boom quotes here. She oh. talked about forgiveness is an act of the will, and the will can function regardless of the temperature of your heart. Right. It's a choice you make. Forgiveness is the key that unlocks the door of resentment and the handcuffs of hatred. It's a power that breaks the chains of bitterness and the shackles of selfishness. She says another thing. She said, if, if we forgive other people, our hearts are made fit to receive forgiveness. And really, that's it's, right. it's the same thing that Yeshua says. He said, if you don't forgive others... Right. then your Heavenly Father will not forgive you. That's some pretty serious conversation right That's there. True. And so this, this whole aspect of forgiveness isn't like you know something that maybe we should do. It, when it boils down to it, you have, yeah. you, not only mm -hmm. do you have to, it's, it's really walking, it's following Yeshua like 101. It's like, or we would say like Christianity 101, or walking yeah. with the Master. Like forgiveness, if, if, if your sins are not forgiven by the Father, how different is, are you than, than anybody else? Yeah. That is what the what the real key is, because at some point, everyone will give an account 
for for what your issues are and the, and the right. real question is is who will who will atone for your sins who will who will say that that is covered and exactly right. and Yeshua is saying that if you don't <laughs> forgive others like God then God will not forgive you and so going back here to to Psalm 130 as we're talking about it mm-hmm. if you Lord should mark iniquities O Lord who could stand but there is forgiveness with you mm-hmm. that you may be feared and so yeah. he's saying there is forgiveness with God specifically that you may be feared. And we talked about this weeks ago about that word feared. Right. Is it's a sense of awe and reverence, not of revered, like a yeah. like a like a scared sort of thing, but it's a it's being revered and right. being honored. And so when you forgive, God is bringing like God is forgiving that 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 he may be feared when you're forgiving other people it's really bringing honor onto yourself and so you know sometimes people talk about uh you know that um not forgiving somebody is like you know drinking poison and hoping somebody else will die and so the same thing is is uh, true sort of in re- reverse is when you are forgiving it actually benefits you more yeah you're and, you're healthy you're uh you're not because the whole the whole anger and it really it says eats you up inside well it really yeah. i mean medically it's proven that that unforgiveness causes medical, uh, it's not advised by the doctor, certainly not by the great physician, yeah. uh, not advised at all. Indeed, indeed. So uh, so we, uh, let's spend a little bit of time yeah. praying on that, praying for forgiveness, yeah. even, even in this time, if it's something that, uh, as we've been talking, it's something that the Holy Spirit may be even uh, touching something in your heart or your mind or bringing something back to mind of somebody you need to forgive. Like right. this, this isn't like a, a, perhaps a good suggestion. Like we said, this is like basic walking with the right. Lord, forgiveness. And also, what is this whole COVID thing about? You know, Derek asked, hey, Derek, you said, is this going to be the new normal, never going to church again? I don't believe so at all. None, no one believes that at all. It's a time that God is, or God is allowed to happen. Whether or not, you know, God has allowed it to happen, that there's this time where we are going to be learning something. We're going to take a time away from mm. our normal busyness. Yeah. We're learning something really, really cool about Things like forgiveness, things like who really, who we really are. How can we love our brothers and not be so divided? Uh, many times, someone says, "I'm a charismatic. I would never be caught with a Pentecostal." Mm. You know, we're very different. I'm like, I didn't even know there was a difference. You know, but what about what about God's greater plan for all of us together in His will? So let's pray into that. Yeah. So Lord, it. we thank you for the fact that there is forgiveness with you. We know that there is. And when Corey Ten Boom was there in Munich. In Munich, and she was in that church in Munich, and she saw that SS officer where she had to be totally stripped naked and, and thrown onto a train to her death, and she managed to escape. Oh, and to be able to forgive, it's unthinkable that she'd be able to forgive that guy. And uh, when she met him, and put her put your word, your words into practice. So Lord, as we're being tested, if we're going to put your words into practice, uh, hopefully it's not as bad a test as that. But if we have anything that is, uh, some people in small domestic things are saying, "Hey, I, that's that's uneasy for me when someone treats me this way. I feel used. I feel abused." We just pray that forgiveness would be what we practice. Forgiveness is what we do. Forgiveness is our way of life. We're followers of the way, and this is the way, and that's forgiveness. This is your way. God, we ask that uh, that mm-hmm. the, the way that you forgive, Lord, we want to be able to forgive. Mm-hmm. The way that you forgave uh, your enemies or even those that nailed you to the cross, Jesus, that you would give us that same grace mm-hmm. when people uh, attack us unjustly, for people to try to, to, to pin us down and take things from us. Or even just outright hate us for whatever reason, God. We ask for your grace to to really to be like Yeshua and to yeah. do do what He did and to forgive open handedly and open endedly um, for no other reason other than we want to be like You, Lord. If You don't keep track of iniquities, then I don't want to keep track of iniquities. I don't want to keep track. If You don't keep right. track of of other people's sins, if You don't keep track of my sins, I don't want to keep track of other people's sins. And so, God, we ask that for that grace just to let go. And even even now, as our friends are watching, God, yes. would You forgive us for for judging other people, for holding things against each other, for holding unforgiveness. God, we want to lay that out before you. We want to let go of those things. And we want to honor you just simply by following your word and to forgive um, and not keep track of sins the way that you don't keep track of sins. And God, we we ask in, in Yeshua's name now that you would even just by your spirit, just bring, bring a grace over that um, over some of those broken relationships or things that need to be healed mm-hmm. or things that need to be forgiven and let go of. God, we give those offenses to you and, yeah. uh, and we willingly let go knowing that you are the one in control of those things. Just the thought is, mm. how do you know that, that we're in really a, a time 
prophesied about by the great Galilean prophet, Yeshua the Messiah. One of the ways that we know, it says iniquity will wax worse and worse, means that it'll get things will get really bad, people will be very, uh, very uh, lascivious, lascivious, and hmm. enough to vex God's spirit, yeah. And not only that, but it says that, um, not only, does, he doesn't say many will offend, we're talking Matthew, what is it, 24, many yeah. will offend, he says many will be offended, hate and betray one another. Many are going to take offense, and that's what everybody wants to do nowadays. This is the joke, the millennial joke, is, uh, uh, hey, do you, would you like some cereal? I'm offended that you wouldn't know that I don't even like to eat uh, wheat-based products by General Mills. Well, I'm, and then they say, well, I'm offended that you're offended that, that you're offended at me. So it's just taking offense. Everyone's taking offense all the time. Taking offense, taking offense. That's exactly what Yeshua said would be a sign, is that people would be offended, hate, and betray one another. So we want to say that love is what is the key right here, and forgiveness is the key. Anybody, any two-year-old can be offended. Any little baby can be offended. It right. takes a real, real believer to be able to forgive. It takes a real man to, <laughs> and a woman <laughs> to be able to forgive. Indeed, indeed. So, yeah. uh Mm -hmm. Verse 5, I wait for the Lord, my soul does wait, and in his word I do hope. My soul waits Amen. for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, indeed more than watchmen for the morning. Yes. And so take the time, even in this, uh, in the time here of, uh, of being at home, of trying to figure out uh, sort of what happens this week. I, as many of you probably have been experiencing, I was talking to a friend and uh, her, her comment to me was like, you know, on Monday, it was like, I get to wake up and figure out what I'm going to figure out. To, like, how, like, you know, I don't know what to do this week, and right. I, need to, I need to figure all that out. Take the time to to block aside some time just to wait on the Lord. You know, sometimes we, when when life was busy, we'd say, well, we don't have time for this. That's we right. don't have time for that. Now, suddenly, you have lots of time. So, it's usually not an issue of, uh, of do you have time. It's right. what do you prioritize and what do you make time for. That's right. So make the time to wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word, I do hope, my soul waits for the Lord right. more than the watchman for the morning. Yeah, and another encouragement is that God can use some rowdy Galileans. Well, guess what? He can use anyone then. I always would think, man, if, if I was God, and if I was going to choose a people to display my glory and display my wonders and cast them to the ends of the earth, bring them back, Aliyah, and then prepare to return and dwell. Probably the Norwegians. Now that's that's an organized people. You may be the Finnish people. Finnish well, people. you know, funny you mentioned, I was just about to say that uh, Sonia is joining us from Finland. Wow, straight from the sauna. I like it. I like it. A this voice from the sauna. There has, you go. Has spoken. Now, those people are organized and things are, things are, are spit spot, you know, and uh, even Germans, you know, Germans, it's amazing. Things are really, uh, whereas, you know what? Some of the history, some of our history in Israel, it's a little crazy. A little crazy. You don't say. Uh, just driving down the road in modern day Israel, it's a little crazy. No doubt about uh, it. Maybe now, not so much. There's actually lines in Israel, which is, which is a, it's, a yeah, miracle. It's, it's, un, it's unheard of. Pentecost Miracles do miracle. happen. And, uh, but yet, yep. yet, yet it's something that God can use even through a crazy story like Lot. Lot, and he's deciding to fight with Abraham and the herdsmen. Mm. He decides to go live in Sodom, and he's got these two angels have to go rescue him. And he's giving his daughter over to these crazy people, and then the cave city, and the wife turns to salt, and then Moabites, and then Ruth, and then Obed, and then Jesse, then David, then Yeshua. You know, what a redemption. Well, and I want to I point something out. Is that you mentioned uh, Abraham and Lot. Um, is uh, in the Bible. I'm not sure if you know that Abraham was actually the smartest guy in the Bible. Oh, because he knew a, a lot. He knew a lot. He knew a lot. He knew a lot. Uh, so that is, if you've ever wondered who the smartest, we most people think it's Solomon, right. but it's really Abraham because he <laughs> right. he, knew, he knew a lot. But okay, he, so but Lot is called my righteous man. That's what I'm always like. After all that very brief history that I just threw out there, he calls him my righteous Lot. And then he uses him to bring about the Messiah. Mm. So that is what's so amazing. It's also where Abraham built his house, was on a lot. On a lot. On a lot of land. On a lot. Okay, so Jennifer White is jumping in with us from uh, Maine. Sherry Berry, welcome back. Um, Jordan says, hey, from Canada. Hey, there's a, there's a Gilad, uh, there's a Gilad, Ros how do you pronounce Rose, Rose, Rose Singer? Rose Singer. Rose Singer. Rose Singer. It's like the... 
the, those guys, the galley. <laughs> the, the, uh, the galley. No. Good to see you, lad. Absolutely. He's a, he's a wonderful galley. He is a amazing. fellow brother just living right up the hill. Great Great to see you, buddy. Uh, let's see who else we got. We've got uh, Stacy. Oh, Stacy is still Stacy is still hanging around. Would you imagine that she's still hanging in from Atlanta? Kelly dropping in. Um, let's see. We've got Jordan. Yes. Going through the and some going. prayer requests coming up here too. Some prayers. Perfect. Michal. Hi, Pam. Uh, Rini Black is back. She's saying pray for me. Uh, drop a. I'm, I'm looking on down here. Maybe she already dropped it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, she did. She did. Okay, Let's perfect. Pray for. Her. Okay, I'll just jump into this prayer. Do it. Renee, we want to pray for you. And this is what we do on this on this hotline is we really want to bring good news from the galley and pray for you. So, yes, we pray for sleep, Lord, for Renee Black. We just thank you, Lord, that you are stronger than any kind of us. The brain is like a radio uh, station. Where there's all kinds of, of, of uh, waves. Some of them are big waves, some of them are small waves, some of them are like gamma waves, some of them are like uh, all kinds of different frequencies are being picked up. And that's not because we're bad people. But we pray, Lord Yeshua, that you would protect uh, and that you would give Renee a, a supernatural protection to take captive every thought that's not of you. And especially when she's asleep, we just pray, Father, God, that you would be protected. You said you give your beloved sleep. We pray for good sleep over Renee. We thank you, Father God, that she's even brought this out and that there will be no noise because, Lord, our, our house has the blood of the Lamb on it. Hey, so no, no <laughs> angel of death, no, no power, uh, no principality. No, the height, nor depth, nor angels, nor demons can uh, separate us from your love. So a house filled with love, a house filled with light, a house filled with your spirit, with the, with the lamps on, awaiting your, your arrival, awaiting your return, and about your business, looking through your word, what is our part in this, and, and, and really praying and blessing the land of Israel. So we say, we say, Lord, protect this land just like you did the houses in Egypt mm. on Passover, and just like you filled the house on Pentecost, the upper room, with your Holy Spirit, we just pray there'll be such a flood. There's no room for anything but your Holy Spirit mm. in Renee Black. So we pray for a good testimony tomorrow at this time in Yeshua's yeah. name. <clears throat> and Lord, we're praying with Joanne about uh, about the believers leaving the church due to offense. And so, God, we're asking, God, just your grace within your body as far mm -hmm. as loving each other and giving grace to each other. Um, it's it's usually the, the people that are close to us that hurt us the most. And so, yes. God, we ask that you would just help us to extend grace to... To those that are within uh, within the congregations, within the within the churches, and and God, we recognize that that um, that the church really is a group of people rather than a building or an organization. Mm -hmm. That we we are the church, we are the, the 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 congregation of the body, and so we're asking Lord for Your grace. That as uh, this continues in this season, Lord, yes. you would help us to find our place within the body, whether we're going to a, a Saturday or a Sunday meeting of some sort, wherever we're at. Lord, we want to connect yeah. with other believers in Yeshua, other people that love you the way that we love you. And so, God, we're asking your favor and your grace uh, within the congregation, within the assembly of the believers, Lord, we ask that you bring healing and restoration, and uh, and and just uh, an abundance of love and grace, the way that you love us, God. Yes, and you know there is physical social distancing. Yes, we know that, uh, but there's also spiritual and digital social connecting. Uh, there's a there's a much stronger connecting now than is normal normal yeah. I think and that's that's something that transcends uh, borders distances even time zones yeah and you know you you mentioned something uh, a couple weeks ago when we really first dive started diving into this mm -hmm. is that uh, you know now everybody is actually meeting kind of house to house yes and it's it's very we're getting a little biblical up in here all, we are. all over the place we because are. it's really what the book of Acts did they they didn't it say. Is. Hey, it's time to build a church so we can go to that meeting so we can all pray together. Right. It was they were spending time together, they were breaking bread together, and even if uh, with the way the, the the situations are now, with still right. in a lot of places, even like here, you can't get large groups of people together. There are ways that you can continue to connect with people like this, having the making the video calls, getting on right. conversations like this, getting involved in some of our threads, making comments, sharing so, the stream. Thank you for sharing the stream. Absolutely. Dana. God so bless. We, you. So we're, we we see and even we we have a, a a laptop and a phone. We're we're keeping track of everybody who's who's um, keeping up with us here. So as you're making comments, we can kind of see that and we respond the best that we can. So we appreciate you guys reaching out to us as we're trying to reconnect with you guys and, uh, and reaching out as well. So, uh, so Thang from, uh, I think uh, Thang is from, um, from the Philippines, Lisa White from, uh, from Australia. Right. 
Yeah. And so uh, and Cindy, Cindy, and uh, Cindy and Stacia, mother daughter team, yes. watching at the same time. Yes. Crazy. But even if to add a little bit more onto what you said, because now that now that you said that, reminded me, uh, what, what's really awesome is that it, what is it? Acts chapter two verse forty six. They were meeting house to house. House to house. Acts chapter five verse uh, forty two. They were meeting house to house. Acts chapter eight verse three. They were meeting house after house after house. Yeah. Acts chapter ten verse twenty two. Cornelius's house. He got filled with the spirit too. Wasn't even Jewish. He got it. That's crazy. That's, isn't that crazy? How dare he? Uh, yeah. Acts chapter twelve, twelve. Mary's house. Uh, Acts sixteen, thirty-two. Uh, I was just reading that the other day. Um, suddenly they're in a jailhouse, and that jailhouse rocked, <laughs> and it rocked so much that the, the bars fell off. Acts sixteen, forty. Lydia's house. <laughs> Acts eighteen, seven. Titus Justice's house. My actually younger brother's name Justice. Mm. After this guy, uh, which is really cool. Acts twenty twenty. House to house. Could 2020 have to do with house to house and strengthening the core? Interesting. The core workout. Interesting. Work out the core. Could very well be. Uh, Romans 16.5, Priscilla and Aquila. 1 Corinthians 16.19, Priscilla and Aquila's house. Colossians 4. Right, it goes on, and, and I remember even Jason's house. They were just meeting in houses, and, uh, and things were happening, big things. Yeah. Some people were falling out of windows and dying and getting resurrected. But God was moving in an amazing, amazing way. And that's what we're believing, is the COVID is going to lead to the kavod, mm. to the glory. That's how you say glory in Hebrew, yeah. the latter glory. And it's going to be wonderful as we count up to Pentecost and beyond. Yes. Amen. For sure. Amen, amen. Uh, amen. Yes. So, so we were just at... We're at verse 7. Verse, oh, Israel. Yes. So now we're, we're going from a personal thing. I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait in you. I do hope my soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. Indeed, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Then the very next verse, verse 7. Oh, Israel. Yes. Hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is loving kindness, and with him there is abundant redemption. And he right. will redeem Israel... Oh. From all of his iniquities. Redemption is a word Redemption. called geulah. Geulah in Hebrew. Everybody is wondering, when is the geulah going to come? The redemption. The when geulah. is the Messiah going to come? Will the Messiah come at the same time as the geulah, the redemption? Or will the geulah happen first? Are we all in the beginnings of the redemption right now? Mm. Everybody wants redemption. Even that cup where we get communion. And it wasn't a coffee mug. But it was actually a, a, a wine glass on Pentec on a Passover, and it was the third cup, many believe, and it was the cup of redemption. Mm. And so there is a redemption that we're all part of. And we and to quote, what was it, Pocahontas? Don't stop believing. No, that wasn't Pocahontas. Who did that? Anyway, <laughs> don't stop believing. You can't stop believing in the redemption because mm. it's real and it's written about. And he just we just read that. Oh Israel, trust in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy and loving kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. Rede redemption. Redemption. Yes. Redemption. That's Passover land, putting the red in redemption. That's it. And uh, so that's what we're seeing right now. And now many people say, how can I trust this old book? How can I really rely on it? I mean, I saw this quote. It made me really mad. Back in the day, these are the same people saying the earth was flat. These were the same people saying the earth is flat. Flat earth society. I said, yeah. um, actually, that, that's actually not only not true, it's, it's ill-informed. It's, uh, it's, you're not really informed if people think that that's true because the Bible actually called it out way before. This is a reliable book. I'm going to give you a few examples of how just how reliable it was. Uh, in the year 1650, a discovery was made wow. that the Earth is suspended in space. Before that, people were thinking that it was actually on the back of a big turtle or that the Earth was um, a really big turtle. A really, really, really big turtle. Uh, <laughs> and um, wow. there's many different things that people thought that the Earth was, but no one thought it's just floating there, suspended on absolutely nothing. Except, oh right, Job 26 verse 7, the Earth is suspended in nothing, mm. in space. Job knew that. The Bible knew that. That's 3,000 years before, 3,000 pickles before 1650 when they figured that out. Wow. Um, you probably know with the whole COVID crisis, everyone's saying, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. You know what they were doing before that? They were, the doctors would go and take dead bodies to the morgue. Then they go and, and help a, deliver a baby. No washing hands yeah. at all. No washing hands at all. This was the normal thing throughout centuries of medical practice. Uh, yeah. Until you got this one guy called Semmelweis, right? Semmelweis, I talked about him. Well, he says, 
before you're pulling a baby out of a, you know, just go ahead and wash your hands, please. And then the death rate of mothers went down from 30% to 2%. It's crazy. 30% to 2%. Just because of the washing hands. But you know how they would wash their hands? You've seen old movies, right? It's a basin. Get me a basin of water. Get me a basin. They always would wash in a hmm. basin of water. Interesting. But what does the Bible say? The Bible's even smarter. Uh, Leviticus 15. Wash in running water. Wash in running water. A basin, still a bunch of bunch of blood in a basin. That's not still not doing the full the full thing. Well, scene, if you'd go biblical, is Leviticus 15 scene, verse 13, which is running. That's the way that's the way it's done. Uh, a couple more. The circle of the earth. No. They weren't saying flat earth. No. The Bible clearly says, Isaiah 40, verse 22, that it's the circle, the sphere, the circle of the earth, which is suspended in nothing, according to Job. So these, all these peeps have the wrong idea when they're thinking that believers were saying the Aristotle, Aristotle's discovery about observing the eclipse of a moon, that was way later, hundreds and hundreds of years huh. after. And then modern day, that's 3,000 years later, we finally figure out people are 2,000 years later. People are figuring out what the Bible knew the whole time. Well, and you know what so, else the Bible knew? Yes. Is that Israel should hope in the Lord. They should. For with the Lord is a loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption. Abundant means a lot. Mm. A lot of redemption. Mm -hmm. Big bucketfuls of redemption. And he will redeem Israel from wow. all his iniquities. Amen. And so... Why don't we? I want to spend how, some time. How is he going to redeem? How is he going to do this? Well, I don't know, but we should ask him. So yeah. why, don't, why don't we pray uh, right now? Let's. Why don't you join with us about praying for not only the peace of Jerusalem, we're going to pray for Israel, pray for the nation right now. The uh, there's a unity government that's been established. Right. Uh, they're talking about uh, annexing Judea and Samaria. Mm. The, the uh, Palestinian government, of course, is freaking out and going, "Don't you dare annex! We right. haven't forgotten. You're trying to pull a fast one and all their." their shenanigans that they've got mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, but regardless, this is a land that God loves. God has a plan, a specific plan for this land. And um, and we can talk about that. In fact, we talked about that a couple days ago. We could keep talking about that in a, in a future one. But we want to be praying for Israel. Let's spend some time praying for God to bring the hope of Israel, redeem Israel from his iniquities as, he, yeah. as, um, as God promised. And uh, and really see him fulfill mm. that word because at some point in the Bible, uh, the it, it, in the Bible it says that all of Israel will be saved. And so yeah. sometimes people say, well, what does all really mean? Does it mm. means all of this and all of that? And you know, it at least means what it says it means. Right. I'm not going to pretend that I know what all really means in whatever way that you want to argue and define about that. But the fact is, is the Bible says that all of Israel will be saved. I think it's Romans 16, 26. It's the only nation uh, that in the scriptures that God uh, promises that he's going to bring a full fulfillment of an entire nation to salvation, to, to, to mm. his son uh, Yeshua. And how he's going to do that, I don't have any idea. But the fact is that he says he's going to do right. it. And here we have an opportunity to be involved in the prayer to help bring that about. Well, what if, here's an idea. I, not, could this is a Lay suggestion for, for God. What if somehow on the normal traditional sacrifice time of around Pentecost, mm. sorry, around Passover, yeah. then you'd have like a, a, a superpower like lamb, which could then suddenly you know redeem everybody, not only Israel, but maybe the world, and give them the option. For like a superhero lamb. Like a super, yeah, uh, whose blood would be not just on the doorpost to stop from enemy, but really a to provide us a clean house and blood on the doorpost so we could go up to Pentecost. Well, the only way you could do that fired. would be if that, if, that, if that superhero would be like completely perfect. Right, you need like a spotless, like a spotless Like a spotless would no be, really, it'd be a great idea. This, this would be, in theory, amazing, but it should happen right on Passover it, it to match, and then, and then maybe it couldn't stay dead because that would be, there wouldn't be a resurrection power to redeem us yeah, because, our sins and rise us up. Yeah, because I mean, if, if he's really a superpower, superhuman right. sort of situation yeah, that's pure it. and spotless, yeah. I would think that he would have the ability right. to, to come back to life, because that would really demonstrate... Yeah. Who that power really is? Like even Superman comics, so even he dies. Yeah, denies, but he gets he gets resurrected. He was super for a time, but eventually he was unsuper. So you'd have to have a being so powerful, super duper. It would be super duper. If only that would be possible on Passover, then on Pentecost we'd be ready for that fire to fall in our clean vessels. <sighs> wow, you know, God, if you're listening, um, that would be a really great idea. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Don't the historical documents and scrolls talk about that? 
I think it does. Mm. You know, and the amazing thing about uh, about the prophets is that anytime there's a prophecy of the Messiah, there's always this God-man dilemma. Is that he'll be born in Bethlehem, mm. but his ever his his comings and goings will be from everlasting to everlasting. Right. He'll be from the the root of David. He'll be from right. David's line, but you'll call him the Lord our righteousness. And uh, even uh, even in, uh, I think it's Deuteronomy 18, Moses talks about there's going to be a prophet that's going to right. be among you, but if you don't listen to him, it's going to be like not listening to God himself. Greater so, than Moses? I mean, crazy, right? Impossible. I mean, that's, I don't know if that is possible. Wow. Uh, but, uh, but you have this, this amazing uh, sort of dilemma within the scriptures. Right. He's going to be from Israel. He's going to be born from Israel. He's going to be from among you, but he's going to be God. That's right. And then... You have this ironic uh, verse in Leviticus that says right. that when somebody blasphemes, you need to kill him. In other words, when the Messiah comes, he's going to be from among you, but he's going to be God. Mm -hmm. and, then the, and then the Torah says, when somebody shows up and says that he's God, you have to kill him. Right. So if God is perfect, if, if, uh, if, if this perfect spotless lamb is being prophesied mm -hmm. by the prophets to be pure and spotless, his death is already prophesied as well because the Jews would have to, Jewish people, the, the, even the Sanhedrin, although like we were talking about the other day, we were talking about the, the kangaroo court and the craziness that was going right. on. Unjust trial. At, mm -hmm. at the very core in, in the, uh, what really condemns Yeshua is the fact that he was perfect and he said that he was God. Mm. And so, but by doing that, the high priest was just simply referring to what was already written. And when you have somebody who says that they're God, kill him. Mm -hmm. And so God ensures with even within the Torah that when mm -hmm. we've talked about it before that before the foundations of the world time mm -hmm. that that sacrifice was already made it was already made mm -hmm. long before and so God has we say all of this not in a just sort of a um, a large sort of biblical abstract mm -hmm. sort of way I communicate this I say this in a way that God has a very specific plan right it's true and and God knows what's going on right now today this whole COVID thing the whole uh, COVID-19 you know, it's it's not like he's he's shocked and he's sitting in you know in heaven going I, I wasn't ready for this you remember the bubonic plague the black plague scarlet fever you remember all these I remember it like it was SARS yesterday and uh, 17 to 25 million people dead from the black plague Jewish people were blamed for it but the thing is is people didn't know about this little thing called quarantine oh wait they did know found in Leviticus 13 it says if someone is is sick you should put him aside because they didn't do that in the Black Plague. That's how so many died. Yeah. Nowadays, people are saying, oh, maybe we should look to the book of Leviticus, chapter 13, because it says there, it actually says a 14-day quarantine. First of all, it's seven days. The priest checks on him. Then another seven days, it's 14-day quarantine. So that's something in the Bible. If they only knew that in Crazy. Europe, in the Middle Ages, hmm. oh, actually they were. They just they weren't did. taking God seriously and his word seriously. Interesting. And uh, so that's where quarantine came from, just so you know. <clears throat> 14-day quarantine. So as we're coming to the end of this, and yeah. not only the end of the quarantine, but to the end of this hour, we want to spend a little bit of time yeah. not only to wrap up this whole thing, but also we want to be praying for the nation of Israel. Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. Yes. So, so God, we're speaking this mm -hmm. out to this nation from the Galilee again. Yes. Oh, Lord, hope. Uh, oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is loving kindness. With him is abundant redemption. He will redeem Israel. From all right. of his iniquities. And so, God, we ask for this revelation upon this nation. Yes. Even in the midst of uh, trying to form a unity government, trying to avoid a, a fourth elections, trying to get a, a, a government of some type established to, um, to begin some, some uh, mm -hmm. needed uh, leadership in different aspects of Israeli society. God, we ask uh, for your abundant redemption to be made known, to be made clear. God, we ask for, uh, for even, the, the, even the believers, even the, 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 the ministries that are going on in, in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv and Haifa here in the Galilee. God, we ask for, uh, for your apostolic leaders, for prophetic, mm -hmm. uh, for, for prophetic leaders to step up, for strong evangelists and pastors and teachers and evangelists. God, those, those, uh, those fi that five-fold ministry to be made uh, evident and demonstrated again in your time, in your word, here in this time, in this mm -hmm. place, God, that you would bring forth the fire and the anointing that was known in the first century. God, would you do it again in this nation as you did before. God, we trust you that you are faithful to your word, that you will redeem Israel. And we say, come quickly, Lord, mm. and do it in our day. Yes. 
Yes, Lord, bless those faithful, Lord, who are who are really sharing the light, spreading the, the joy, and, and really some a bit of your purposes in and through this time of uncertainty. There are things we can be certain of and things that we can be sure of, and that is that this house of prayer won't be empty. It'll be filled with worshipers mm. that we're building, and, and their land will be filled with worshipers, and the righteous will be protected, and they will rally, and there will be greatness of your spirit being poured mm. out through it from the young to the old, young at heart. Uh, that they will dream dreams, the young men will prophesy, and we just thank you for these great, great, um, these great uh, hope and mm. tikva, even as we're counting Amen. up to Pentecost, and even as next week is, of course, Independence Day, and before that, Fallen Soldiers Day, and we're going through all this together, we're counting the Omer, and we're, we're, we're putting you in your rightful place in our hearts, and thank you for that, that just around the river bend, there's something new, Every day, you know, do you, amen, do you realize every day there's been something new just around the river bend? Now that's Pocahontas. Indeed. And, yeah, what was it? Should you can't, I still you marry can't Pocahontas? poke that, Hannes. Just around the river bend? Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that because uh, Derek is saying he's hoping that there's also going to be a choir in our broadcast. We oh. Could, we could have choir robes all across the back here. We could do it at the Jordan River bend and literally just be dunking people and... Uh, yes. Sharing the good and news. And holding them down until the bubbles stop. I don't know what that was. So, uh, Pocahontas so, wouldn't approve. Yeah. Somewhere past the sea. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> so poke that, Hannes. Okay, yeah. so uh, so thanks for joining us. We're sorry that this is getting worse and worse as it goes. We're going to shut this thing down. Shut this pickle down before it gets too pickled. We're going to soft taco this and wrap it right up. And so, uh, make it like baby Moses and wrap it up. But uh, be like a fetus and head out. Head out, probably. So listen, <laughs> like if a tree. Uh, <laughs> like, a tree <laughs> like a tree and leave, um, uh, I can think of more, but they're probably less appropriate for a broadcast as such. But anyhow, <laughs> as we're wrapping up, please share this broadcast. Uh, share it out with um, with your friends, and uh, even if you don't like it, share it twice, as we like to say. And yeah. is there any last words, Chaim, from the Galilee that all of our people need to know right now? Again. Thank you so much for all the fa all those who are helping this this house of prayer to be established. Even if it's just by talking to other houses of prayer, you're saying I'm communicating with IHOP with with this with that with wh whatever, and my local house of prayer. We're connecting with the Galilee. These bridges, you are bridge builders, and uh, thank you for that. It's so amazing to see this in action, even right now, especially right now. It's a miracle. So I just want to thank you for that. And we'll keep you posted with uh, lives and with everything. And uh, if you want to receive those 64 Alia scriptures, which are happening right now, we'll put your email on the comments. And we're going to send you today Whew. your Alia scriptures, which are happening right now. So tomorrow, same bat time, same yeah. bat channel. And remember, don't eat bats because bad things happen around right. the world when that happens. That's true. So um, catch you tomorrow. Shabbat Shalom. Tomorrow, I guess it's not Shabbat yet, but I'd like right. to say it anyhow. But it's same time, 2 o'clock tomorrow. Same time, we'll say Shabbat Shalom tomorrow. We'll probably be dressed up in our, in our Shabbat clothes. Oh. I might think of combing my hair. I don't know. We're, Who knows? we're calculating some crazy things. Feeling crazy tomorrow. I can yeah. feel it already. <laughs> so see you then.